Hello, yes, me again. Tried to do a YouTube video and it's not uploaded, so I don't know what's going on. So I thought I'd come on live. Um, I can't just do a video on my phone because I've got too many photographs and it won't let me save it. So anyway, my subject is my top five tips for the menopause. I know I had a few people saying that they wanted to know more about what my tips were. It's a delicate subject. Probably um, a lot of people don't like talking about it. But I just wanted to explain um, the menopause uh, can occur between the late 40s, uh, mid 50s and it's when your periods stop. So um, I went through the perimenopause, which is um, where your periods are irregular. Um, and I got like a, a few month after month and then none for about three months and then a random one. And then I didn't have a period for about another three, six months. And it just became really irregular. And that was sort of, I'll say that's probably early 40s, so quite early. Um, and the perimenopause is the bit before the menopause and you're officially in the menopause when uh, you haven't had a period for a year and um, it causes chaos actually absolutely causes chaos so it's it's something not to dread um, but it's just really looking at how you can manage it and uh, still function <laughs> um, people are different in their symptoms I'm not a doctor, I'm not any sort of medical expert, but I just wanted to give you my point of view and my top tips for dealing with the menopause. Um, it's really an emotional time because you feel like you're old. So you get to the menopause and you think, my God, that's it. My life is over. I've got no purpose. <laughs> And um, it's really when your oestrogen levels decline and your periods stop. That's when you're in the menopause. And it's some, not something to be scared of. And um, you know it's coming, but when it when you get to the menopause, you're like, what, what the hell's going on? Um, it's like PMS symptoms, but you never know when it's going to stop. So it's like... When you have PMS, you know that it's only going to last a week or so. Um, with the menopause, it's just um, it's just like that. You know, you're just on a roller coaster of emotions, and it's all to do with the hormones. Um, so you've got the perimenopause, the menopause, and then the postmenopause. And um, I don't know if I'm in the postmenopause. I don't even know when you get to that stage. All I know is you can be in the perimenopause for like ten years, which seems ages. Um, and like I said, you're officially in the menopause when your periods stop. So um, my five top tips, right? Are you ready? It's just a number, remember, don't, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a real turning point in your life and you do feel like um, what's happening and where do I go from here? So I'm going to go through five top tips. My five top tips are healthy eating, and I will go in detail, hot flashes, reducing hot flashes or hot flushes, uh, healthy weight and collagen. I'll tell you a lot more about that. I'm learning lots about collagen and mental health. Five top tips, okay? So I'm going to go into each one. Feel free to comment or like or wave or anything. Um, thanks for joining me. So it's a bit of a d weird subject. So I just want to say hi Mel, hi Lisa, hi Laura, hi Mick. Uncle Mick, hi Joe, and hi Cheryl. Thanks, Cheryl. So it can be an embarrassing subject, but it's nothing to be embarrassed about because everybody is going to go through it and it's a scary thought sometimes, but these are tips to just reassure you that you know you can manage it and it's not the end of the world. So my first top tip was healthy eating. Okay, so um reducing refined sugars and processed foods and, and it sort of ties in with a healthy weight um you've got higher risk of osteoporosis obesity heart disease and diabetes and that sounds horrendous it sounds scary but actually it's not um it's just taking care of what you're eating 
when you get to the menopause, um, you t your metabolism slows down. You tend to put weight on more around the middle. And uh, I will talk about that in a minute. So really looking at what you're eating and um, reducing the refined sugars, reducing processed foods and looking at what you're eating is really important. Um, you know, I, I will touch on some subjects about joint pain and uh, things like that. So calcium and vitamin D is very important in the menopause. Um, so you can get your calcium from greens such as kale, for example, um, spinach, uh, tofu, beans, um, milk alternatives as well as dairy, um, cheese and yogurts. Um, also as well, vitamin D is sort of um, your body... Um, your main source of vitamin D is in the sunlight. We haven't seen much of that lately, but um, as you get older, your your um, body reduces uh, the amount of vitamin D that it produces. So, um, and it's it, your skin is less efficient of, of, as making it. And there's a few things you can look at. Okay, so there's a lot of things to cover in these subjects and I, it was really difficult to try and tie it down to five. Um, but maybe looking at supplements, um, eating oily fish and eggs, cod liver oil as well. Now I do, um, I do take supplements um, for a lot of things um, just to make sure that I'm getting all of the nutrients that I need. And I know we think, right, if we eat all of the food groups that we're supposed to, then we will cover all eventualities. But it's really important to look at the vitamins that you're getting and the nutrients you're getting as you are in the menopause. So, I'm just reading, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, the bright side is no periods. Um, weight gain and mood swings is definitely a common thing. Um, I know people do suffer with different symptoms and it's managing them um, and how it works for you. So I'm gonna cover that in a minute. So, um, Right, so that's about the healthy eating. I do actually do um, a 30 days to healthy living um, two or three times a year. Um, and I've found recently, because I've changed careers, I'm now sat in an office at a desk and my weight gain has gone up again. So I'm starting my 30 days again tomorrow, which is reducing, as I said, refined sugars and processed foods, caffeine, wheat, dairy, um, things that may cause um, inflammation and... Um, you know, some people have allergies uh, to certain foods as well. So it's just eliminating those. And that's what I'm doing, just having a refresh for 30 days. No alcohol as well, so that's good. Um, number two, uh, hot flashes or flushes. I didn't suffer too bad with them, but I've got some tips. And it's all about, uh, it's the decrease in oestrogen that's causing the issues. Um, and that's what can cause the hot flashes. So my tips are... Um, you know, uh, you reduce coffee and tea, uh, you stop smoking and a cool room and a fan, um, just having that handy, um, like spray, uh, a cool spray on your face every now and again, just to cool yourself down um, with cold water or a cold gel pack as well you can use. Um, I've got gel eye masks, which I put in the fridge, and I've got a, a, a face jelly as well, which I put on overnight, and I keep that in the fridge as well. And that's really relaxing and cooling. Wearing layers is really important. So um, make sure you have um, thin layers on um, rather than jumpers and things so you can take them off and put them back on. I swear down, right, in work, I must take my jacket on and off about 10 times. Um, you know, if I have a cup of tea, I just feel like boiling. I'm taking it off, putting it on. So having layers is really important. And also on an evening, have um, sheets on your bed rather than duvets. And that means when you're getting hot, you can just again take them off, put them back on as well. Um, cut down on alcohol as well. Um, sip ice cold drinks. Um, when you have a shower or a bath, have it lukewarm rather than really hot. Um, and also, uh, if you're looking at complementary therapies or hormone replacement therapies, speak to a GP and get advice on that. Um, and also join like um, 
you know, sort of chat groups and things. Um, and, you know, some people might have tried other things that may be helpful to you. Um, so that's about the hot flashes. And healthy weight is number three. So healthy weight is really, it's really common to gain weight, as Dawn's already said. Um, and this is due to the change in hormones. And um, this could be due to the change in hormones, the aging, lifestyle, genetics, and gaining body fat, especially around the middle. So around your waist and around your hips, around the stomach area is really common. Um, so being fit, uh, exercising whether that's uh, going to the gym if you don't like the gym maybe walking more um, you can do the couch to 5k uh, there's an app for that swimming yoga is really good really relaxing and pilates you know just find something that works for you whether it's swimming a sport just something that gets you moving it's really important to do that because um, your bone density um, decreases and your joints as well, you know, you have a high risk of osteoporosis. So it's really, really important that you keep moving. I do um, weights as well, not heavy weights, but, you know, resistance bands, things like that is really good. Um, just light weights as well. Just doing something that keeps your bone density improving. Um, because it reduces all the time so it's really important to keep that um, and also keep your joints moving as well um, number four is collagen okay now I've been learning a lot about collagen so as estrogen levels drop so do the so does the collagen in your skin and this reduces um, from the age of 20 which is madness absolute madness and collagen is really important for the skin, not just the skin. It went off. He's still there. Keeps, I keep losing signal. <laughs> collagen is really important for quite a few things, not just your skin. But estrogen levels drop during the perimenopause, which is just before the menopause. And so do the levels of collagen. Um, in fact, our collagen, like I said, starts reducing from the age of 20. All important components um, responsible for plump, bouncy, healthy skin and shiny hair. So that's what collagen is for. Inside though, that's the outside. Inside though, it impacts on the mucous membranes. Um, uh, as a result, lining of the vagina can become thin and almost tissue paper-like. I couldn't believe that. Like I've really looked into this and I thought, that's really interesting. Because this can cause pain and potential bleeding, um, which is probably something that's not even talked about. And I think that's really important to highlight that fact. Um, collagen is also essential for the joints and painful joints can make exercising even more of a challenge. And also increasing already debilitating tiredness. So I don't know if anyone gets tired. And... Um, Ensuring our collagen levels remain high is crucial to the transition from 40s, 50s and onwards um, to remain healthy and fit. Um, exercise is, like I've mentioned, is key. And this is the muscle development can stimulate new growth of collagen. So that's really important. I didn't even know that. And it can prevent the loss of... Um, muscle mass which contributes to sagging tissues and declining bone density um i just wanted to talk about collagen actually because a lot of collagen is actually derived from animals so there was one product i looked at and it was um contained chicken cartilage and i was like someone was like oh is that really bad for you and i was like well i wouldn't really, really like to be putting chicken cartilage in my body um, so I do take a supplement and mine is actually vegan um, so it's not tested on animals it contains no animals but it just helps you um, your body um, produce more collagen so it's uh, I just take a sachet and I put it in water and I take it daily and at least I know that's not got any like chicken bits in it and you know I just find that a bit gross um, I don't know what's in Absolute Collagen Dawn. I've not actually looked at it, but I, I do look at 
ingredients and I will actually post below um, when I look at it because I've not I've only just really started learning about collagen um, but what I get is is I use this um, and this is really good because it's got vitamin C and it's got hyaluronic acid as well in it which is really important so that's what I use anyway um, but it is it is important to um, look at what you're eating and, and what what you're getting um, on a side note from that, um, turmeric is really helpful as well because it reduces inflammation and it's a plant source of oestrogen. Um, so that helps with joint conditions as well. So using something that has turmeric in or you can add turmeric into your foods um, and also magnesium is really important. Um, that supports bone and heart health and can also help with your low moods. Um, so they're the things um, I need to go on to number five, which is mental health. Now, this is a big thing for me because I um, do, you know, there's certain times where I felt a bit low and, um, you know, I can get quite anxious sometimes. Uh, people don't know that. And also, um, you know, it's growing beyond that. I think I, I, I now am, am more braver in um, getting out there and doing things um, you know years ago I would never um, go to a, a conference on my own and be surrounded by loads of different people I would never go to um, the best of you expo on my own and get the train down there two days in a row um, and even before I went I got a little bit anxious about how I was getting there and you know and I do find if I'm in my own company for too long I do get a bit you know but I do find that my mental health, I was like, where is my life going now? What What is my role? And um, feeling like less of a woman, end of an era, I just felt old, you know. I thought, well, this is it now, you know, the menopause, that's it. I'm really, that's the sign of being really old. And then you think, what's that's my role as a female gone, you know, that's it. Um, and so mentally getting your head around that is really important because... It's not that you've changed yourself. It's not that you've changed your mindset. It's not that you've got no purpose, not at all. It's age is just a number and it's looking at the mindset around the menopause and managing it for you. Um, you know, and I think uh, managing the symptoms as well is really important, the mood swings. So I now do meditation and mainly on the night um, because my mind's too busy all of the time. And also looking at um, having goals in my life and also hobbies and taking time out for myself. Um, there was a lot of times where I was working constantly, doing classes, personal training, working, uh, planning sessions. So, so busy. So actually taking time out to um, enjoy yourself and uh, relax and uh, read personal development books and um, surround myself with positive people and um, sometimes on a morning I got to say today's going to be a good day and just um, saying to yourself that how amazing you are you know all the things that you've gone through so the, the mental health side of it is really important and I think that ties in with the fitness as well and healthy eating you know it all ties in together Having a healthy gut means that you have a healthy mind as well. Um, so looking at things that work for you, not everything works for this, you know, for everybody. You've just got to find things that work for you and really um, help with your your the way you think about things. Um, I think I've covered a lot. I mean, there's a lot to deal with with the menopause, like so many symptoms, hot flashes night sweats, difficulty sleeping, low mood, anxiety, reduced sex drive, memory problems, headaches, joint stiffness and, you know, lots of weight around your middle. But it's not the end of the world. You can actually deal with this and, and approach it in a positive mindset and just think of the top five tips that can help you. Um, so, th like I said, healthy eating, um, reducing hot flashes, um, healthy weight, um, increasing your collagen 
and mental health as well. So I really hope these top five tips have helped um, spread some light on some things. You know, it might be stuff you've already known about. It might be stuff that, um, you know, you haven't really thought about. But it is really good to be prepared um, because like Dawn said, it can just creep up and then you're thinking, oh my God, what the hell has gone on? And then, you know, you're just like a psycho for until you sort of try and work out what's going on. Um, personally, I'm not on hormone replacement therapy. I don't know where, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but um, I'm finding I'm managing my symptoms. Um, and I'm not saying they go away like forever, but I'm just saying I'm managing them with um, sort of daily practices, what I'm doing and looking at what I'm eating, looking at how I'm living my life and keeping myself um, mentally aware of um, if I'm going in those low moods and um, doing something about it. You know, it's so easy just to like, you know, just hide your head under the covers and just be like, oh, this is rubbish. And um, but just actually facing things head on. Uh, let me see. So if you've got any questions, because I have covered such a lot, I'm trying to find that link without coming out of this live. Um, oh, my battery's going on my phone as well. <laughs> So all I'm saying is like, um, no style, no absolute, no part, no, no, I can't, I'm free of that and, right, I'm just trying to read this. So my top five tips, right, I'm just going to have a look on the screen because I do like looking at what's in products. Um, And um, making sure that I look at what I'm putting in my body, um, I think is really important. And, you know, I'm quite pleased with, um, I think, where I am mentally and physically. Um, so I'm just having a look at this. Oh, it just brings up all sorts, doesn't it? The thing is, it gets so confusing with supplements. I don't know whether anyone else feels the same. When you're looking at, at stuff in the um, in the actual uh, shops, it can be really confusing about what you're getting. There's so much choice and you don't really get a lot of advice, I don't think, either. And you could just be overwhelmed by how much is on there and what to buy. Do you go for quality? Do you go for price? Do you go for... Right, I'm going to look into that because I don't want to just stay online while um, while I'm reading through stuff. But um, I want to thank you for joining me. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it informative. And um, hopefully I can upload this to my YouTube, but I won't hold my breath. <laughs> so um, have a great evening. If you've got any questions, please message me or um, drop me a line below, whatever you want. So have a great evening, have a great week.